Have you ever wished for a career where you can make a good competitive salary and at the same time make a difference in the community, your community? Then think about the city of Durham. That's right, your local government. With 27 departments, there are so many diverse jobs available with city government. Jobs you've probably never even thought about. Well, there will never be a better time to join the city. If you're ready to find out more, then this show is for you. Welcome to City Life. I'm Beverly Thompson. Joining me to talk about current job openings as well as the benefits of working with the city is Jim O'Donnell. He's a human resources manager in our human resources department. And we have Philip Powell, who is the assistant director of the public works department. Welcome to you both and thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. So Jim, let's get started with you. I know we have a lot of job openings right now. How does that compare to the number that we usually have in the city? We typically have somewhere around 40 or 50 positions. This is prior to the pandemic, uh, mm -hmm. but that is what we averaged. Um, we are now at about averaging 120 or so. Oh. Um, so two and a half times what our normal number is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how are we addressing that? Because I know so many jobs within the city are just critical to providing services for our residents. Correct. Um, so we, we are going forward with our normal uh, set of practices, which is, of course, to post on our City of Durham website. Mm -hmm. uh, there are always very specific websites that we can post uh, jobs onto uh, that are specific to that, that, um, uh, that part of the city, such uh -huh. as engineering or mm -hmm. construction, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But uh, I know we are trying to do some additional things to drum up new candidates, mm -hmm. uh, one of which is we're working uh, on an advertising campaign. Mm -hmm. um, and we think this will be good because it'll get sort of the city of Durham and employment at the city of Durham at the top of people's minds. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you can you know, think about looking for work, but may not think about the city. Uh -huh. uh, and it is one of the bigger employers right in downtown. So mm -hmm. um, the advertising campaign, I think, will bring us to the top of everybody's mind, mm -hmm. hopefully. Mm -hmm. the, um, the other thing that we are trying to do is we're investigating an apprenticeship hmm. program. Um, there are a lot of different positions that we have that have a, a requirement of, say, one or two years worth of experience. Mm -hmm. But how do you get that one or two years of experience? Um, and so the um, the idea around this is so that we can provide somebody sort of a step stone. You can come in, uh, get that apprenticeship uh, experience, mm -hmm. one or two years, and then advance into that full on uh, position. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at that and doing uh, quite a bit of work to try and flesh that out and see what, how it might impact the city. Mm -hmm. um, we are doing career events. We just had a, a job uh, fair or career event not too, too long ago. Mm -hmm. So those are also uh, important. But uh, the last and probably the most important thing is we are revising uh, or looking at our compensation mm -hmm. uh, structure. Uh -huh. uh, now, this happens typically to make sure that we're keeping in line with the market. The mm -hmm. market has been changing like crazy lately, um, very active, very a lot of changes. And so we're trying to make sure that we're keeping inside the market, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, Philip, I know you work in an area that there are a lot of openings in. And it's so vital, too, because you repair streets and stormwater management. So tell me a little bit about your department and what you do. Our department has three divisions. Mm -hmm. We have engineering services, mm -hmm. stormwater, street maintenance, which I'm part of. And we also have a section, the geographic information systems, GIS. GIS. Mm -hmm. So within that piece what we do within the street maintenance is that we maintain the city maintained streets mm -hmm. and, and water, uh, storm water infrastructure. Uh -huh. And we also repair sidewalks, mm -hmm. clean the streets. Mm -hmm. And then we have our piece that very few people think about when we support adverse weather, uh -huh. which we put out brine and we plow the streets for snow and ice during that time period mm -hmm. in order for the first responders to get across the city. And then the second piece is to ensure all the residents can move across once it's all cleared. Mm -hmm. Vital work there, yes. uh, at the, really all the time, but especially during uh, emergencies. So tell me, with a, such a diverse job, what do you enjoy most about your job and working for the city? 
It's pretty simple, making a difference. Huh, okay. Within the job, it's important that you have a sense of doing something that, doing a task that is important, that shows a, uh, a response and it, you can see the difference. Mm -hmm. So by making a difference, it is important to the residents as well as to the city and guests that are here, mm -hmm. whether it's the street repairs or the sidewalk or the storm water mm -hmm. or maintaining the streets and keeping them clean. Uh -huh. Man, that, that's so important to feel like you're making a difference in what you're doing. Uh, what would you tell other people about, you know, why your job is so valuable and, and how they should feel if they, you know, apply for a job uh, in the street maintenance division or in your department? Well, first of all, you have to have the willingness to work as a team member. Mm -hmm. You have to have the willingness to come in and be trained and learn new skills. Mm -hmm. And the most important, you have to have the ability or the, the gumptions that you to work outside in the elements, mm -hmm. in the heat or in the cold. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, Philip, I know you work in one of the largest departments in the city. Give us an idea of the range of the kinds of positions that would fit within your department. At our entry level, we have mm -hmm. the maintenance assistants and the maintenance technician. Mm -hmm. These positions, we look for candidates who have worked outside, been mm -hmm. exposed to the element, who have worked those physical demanding jobs. Mm -hmm. And then at the next level, we have those candidates who may have experience operating equipment, such mm -hmm. as the backhoe and the excavator, mm -hmm. which brings a different proficiency level and skill set in order to perform repairs. Mm -hmm. And then we have our supervisors. But right now, our vacancies, what we have that is in, important is the heavy equipment operators mm -hmm. and at the level of the maintenance assistants and maintenance technicians. Mm -hmm. Which I would imagine are in demand right now. And High in demand. Yes. Competing with the private industry, that that is one of our competitors, as well as other mm -hmm. municipalities. Mm -hmm. So how many openings do you currently have right now in your department? We have 25 as it stands right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. James, I know you mentioned this already, that it's uh, not an apples to apples comparison, but let's just say in certain areas like uh, your area, how do we compare to other cities in terms of actually attracting say, CDL or mechanic uh, technician? mechanical technicians, right? Well, I think there is a lot to Durham that we have to offer. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, just the location is mm -hmm. uh, fantastic. Durham is always listed as one of the better places in the country mm -hmm. to live. Mm -hmm. So there are people that are coming in from outside. So that's always a good thing. Uh -huh. um, gives us some new candidates. And again, uh, I think geographically, um, we pull from both the Raleigh metro area and we pull from Chapel Hill and even Hillsboro mm -hmm. and Greensboro. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a recent hire that was driving all the way from Winston-Salem all wow. the way into Durham. So uh -huh. again, we, we have a very good location as far as North Carolina goes. Mm -hmm. um, to, to build on what Philip said, we, you know, we try and match and do, um, we try and be very competitive with our salaries. Mm -hmm. So that's always great. The, the benefits here at the city are out of this world. Um, they, well, we have four different retirement plans. Uh -huh. We have paid time off that is going to match any other municipality or mm -hmm. it's going to beat every everybody in the private industry. Uh -huh. um, one of the things I like to say in particular about the benefits is that we, we have one plan in our health insurance mm -hmm. that is uh, zero monthly cost or the premium payments are what they call, which are the, the payments that come right out of your paycheck. Mm -hmm for individual only coverage. And I understand that's only just for, for the employee, but that is zero dollars a month. Can't beat that. You can't beat that. <laughs> and I hear this a lot, which is, you know, from candidates saying, well, I can't eat benefits. Well, if you're paying $250 a month for your current health insurance mm -hmm. and you come to the city and you're now paying zero, that is $250 extra in your pocket right. every month. Mm -hmm. So that's $3,000 a year. So I'm, I'm not going to disagree. You can't eat benefits, but it certainly, you know, that helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our benefits are amazing mm. and uh, definitely something people should consider when they're working for the city. So, Philip, what would you say are some of the actual benefits of working for the city versus the private sector? First of all, the city employs 
our um, our staff where they work 12 months a year. Uh-huh. Unlike in the private sector, when you had adverse weather or delays, you will be sent home without pay in the private sector. So that is a big plus working for the city, uh-huh. as well as Jim has mentioned some of the benefits such as the holidays and the pay and those issues. Mm-hmm. And, and then we, we also have some internal recognition, such as Public Works Week. Mm-hmm. And then we get together and we do team, team building and those mm-hmm. things to ensure that our employees' morale is up and we're working together as a team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that paid time off is really good. Especially, you know, thinking about the private sector, sometimes you don't get that. You work when the weather is good. And uh, here at the city, the yes. holidays are, are taken uh, into account. So that's really good. So, Jim, for any job that we're talking about, what is so great about working for the city? And what kind of person would be like a, a great fit for the city? Mm. So it, we do a lot at the city. There's lots of different departments here and the skills and the, um, the specific experience that you need in one department is mm-hmm. going to be vastly different than what you would need in another. In another. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, finance comes to my mind versus public safety or public right. works. Mm-hmm. I mean, these are, these are skill sets that go all over. Mm-hmm. But Philip mentioned it earlier, which was the one thing that I can think of that every department needs are people who can work in a team. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. it's either a team or it's a crew, but whether you're in public works, you're out there working with other people trying to get a particular task or project done. Mm -hmm. Um, And sometimes if it's on the administrative side, you are working hand in hand with other people from other departments Mm -hmm. or within your own department to get Mm -hmm. these things done. Mm -hmm. So if you can work as a team member, and show up every day, you know, give a good contribution into that team. Mm -hmm. That's something that every department looks for. Okay, all right. So speaking of that, I know salaries and benefits are one thing, Mm. but a lot of young people today, they take culture very highly, you know, into consideration. So what is the culture like working for the city? What would you, how would you describe it? Culture is, a, is an interesting thing because, in, in my mind anyway, every department has a slightly different culture. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and, and again, I was mentioning things like finances mm-hmm. for, or finance or budget versus public safety versus mm-hmm. uh, some of the operational departments or even some of the neighborhood um, yeah, engaged right. sort of mm-hmm. departments are going to be much different mm-hmm. than each other as far as the culture mm-hmm. internally. Mm-hmm. But again, one there are a couple of things that I would absolutely see as something that goes across all departments. The mm-hmm. first thing is, and to me, this is one of the other incredibly important things, is realizing that your job impacts the community, mm-hmm. whatever it might be, whatever department it's in. The better you do your job, the better the people are in Durham. Mm -hmm. And that is a huge thing that a lot of people don't remember. Um, And you may not remember it on a daily basis. I know, as I said, I I do my job and I work in the human resources department and I hope I'm doing a good job. Mm -hmm. But every once in a while, I have to sit back and think, if I do a good job, Mm -hmm. that means the city of Durham is going to be a better place for everybody to Mm -hmm. live and work. Um, And that is really something that I think motivates a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Uh, It certainly motivates people that are that are connected and live in Durham. Mm -hmm. Um, That is one of the great things is that the work that you're doing impacts everybody. Uh Well said. Well said. So, Philip, what about public works? What is the culture like? And Jim just said the culture varies slightly from department to department. What is it like in your department? Well, first, it's one of a commitment. Mm -hmm. Commitment to make a difference, commitment to come to work, a commitment to learn a trade and to also further develop that trade. Mm -hmm. Within the division, our employees, again, back to working together as a team, Mm -hmm. and they understand the significance of what they're doing day in and day out, how it impacts the residents and the guests that comes here in the city. Mm -hmm. It's very important that when they complete a job, it is now safe to ride on that street, Mm -hmm. or it's better yet, it's safe for that person that is walking down the sidewalk where they won't trip. Mm-hmm. It's, it's important that the water flows and it's not backing up in someone's backyard. Mm-hmm. So but with our staff, they are very aware of what they're doing uh-huh. and, they, and the culture is one that they know they are making a difference. Awesome. 
Awesome. So, uh, Jim, you mentioned career advancement mm -hmm. and opportunities for growth for people. And you know, right. that is so important nowadays for uh, especially the younger people mm -hmm. and, and transitioning. Talk to me a little bit more about the offerings for career advancement. Uh, they do depend on the departments that you're in. We have some departments that are um, fairly small, uh -huh. and so that becomes a little bit more of a challenge uh -huh. uh, because the, the number of rungs on the ladder are, are less or uh -huh. fewer. Uh -huh. um, but I know we have some larger departments. Uh -huh. um, one of the things that I know Public Works is doing, as well as some other departments, uh, water management and uh, some of the other ones that are more on the operation side, they uh -huh. are uh, getting folks out that are internal, and bring them to a training so that they can get that commercial driver's license, uh -huh. which has value. Mm -hmm. uh, that is something that stays with the employee. It doesn't stay here at the city. Mm -hmm. So we are putting our, our money and time into training mm -hmm. our own internal people to get them trained up or skilled up mm -hmm. so that they can have those uh, future positions. Mm -hmm. um, again, most of them require that commercial driver's license. Uh -huh. Another example is within our emergency communications department, 911. Mm -hmm. They have a training where they hire folks from the outside that may not have any experience mm -hmm. in emergency communications, mm -hmm. but they put them in a 12-week training. That 12 weeks gets them as much hands-on in uh, experience as they possibly can, and then they sort of transition over onto the floor. Mm -hmm. um, and what, from there, they can move up. I think there's four or five more rungs wow. of the ladder That's for great. them to go up. Mm -hmm. So as they get the more and more skills and more and more time on the floor mm -hmm. doing these emergency communications calls, mm -hmm. uh, they can move up. And so, so again, there's, there is that career progression there. Mm -hmm. So, Jim, to build on that, what kinds of things are the city doing to attract new employees or new applicants? So there are some departments uh, that do have an incentive program, uh, meaning mm -hmm. essentially a sign-on bonus. Mm -hmm. So right now with our police recruit uh -huh. position, there is a sign-on bonus for that. Mm -hmm. um, there are some positions within our 911 department uh, on, that are more advanced, mm -hmm. um, and they have sign-on bonuses as well. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Um, I know the, the details of the sign-on bonus, mm -hmm. uh, they're in the postings. Okay. So if you want all the details mm -hmm. of that, um, typically there'll, there'll be a link right there there in the posting to mm -hmm. click on it and it'll bring you through to let you know Great. what the requirements All might right. be. So if people want more information about how to get a job with the city, mm. what do they need to do? The city's website is the place mm -hmm. to go. Mm -hmm. Everything is there. Every mm -hmm. posting that we have that is current is there. Uh -huh. um, but we do also, um, again, I was talking about it earlier uh, with some of these things, we, we will post out to various websites that are mm -hmm. also uh, specific to that industry or that uh -huh. job. Uh -huh. um, I know we have a very big social media presence, so mm -hmm. that's also another excellent place to go mm -hmm. and look and see what events are coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do uh, post positions sometimes on our social media pages. Okay. Um, the, um, the other thing I would recommend that, that folks do, if they are interested, even not today, but mm -hmm. they might be interested in the future uh, for positions at the city. If you go on the city's website, there is something called a job openings alert. Uh -huh. And it's a, a feature that you can click on. You put in your basic information, mm -hmm. your email address, and then you select search criteria. Mm -hmm. And that search criteria, if a job matches that, you will get an email notification letting you know that that position is now open. Uh -huh. So okay. uh, I call it farming for jobs. You're not job hunting. Mm -hmm. You're planting these little seeds down. And all of a sudden, one opens up at the city and you'll get that email notification nice. that says, hey, there's a position within human resources or public works. Mm -hmm. um, and when that opens up, you are then notified and you can go ahead and apply. Okay. Um, and I think that's a great that's a great tool. It really is. Yeah, because people want to be notified or, or find out about a job opening like yeah. instantaneously so and that it, they can apply. And looking for jobs is not fun. It's not <laughs> easy. Um, and so it can take a while. And again, this way you're, you're setting it up so that you can be notified. Mm -hmm. um, the other big thing I will absolutely recommend that people do is mm -hmm. when you're filling out that application, mm -hmm. Take the time 
and fill it out as completely as you can. Mm -hmm. And again, Philip, I'm sure you're going to agree with me on this. Sometimes you get an application and there's almost no information on there. Mm -hmm. they, yes. they describe 10 years worth of experience in one sentence. Uh -huh. And they may leave off certifications. They may leave off that they have equipment, experience with certain types of equipment. Mm -hmm. All of that information is going to help the hiring managers uh -huh. do a better job mm -hmm. and, and see the people that are truly best qualified for these positions. Mm -hmm. But if you only put in the bare minimum, it's oftentimes your application assessment. could just get looked over. Uh -huh. And that's a shame. Yeah, truly. So is there anything else you'd like to share with the public about working for the city of Durham? I, to me, we're, we're like 20, what, seven different departments. So there's a lot of uh, good, diverse kinds of jobs there, a lot mm -hmm. of variety that people might be looking for, and, you know, a lot of opportunities. Yeah. So, yeah. It, I mean, you hit it on the head. So everything from our Parks and Recreation Department, mm -hmm. which clearly does a fantastic job. I mean, Definitely. they they touch the community like any, any other, more than any other department. Mm -hmm. um, you know, providing our kids uh, entertainment and enjoyment throughout right. the summer months right. and beyond. Mm -hmm. um, but they are great, at, but they are very interesting because they have both full-time positions, part-time positions, mm -hmm. seasonal positions. So again, lots of different types of variety of, of positions. Mm -hmm. um, there are some are some departments that are um, out there working directly with the community, mm -hmm. community development, neighborhood improvement services. Um, they are out there making these our community mm -hmm. a better place. Both you know. In, in lots of different ways. Um, uh, our operations group, make sure that things are going well. Phillips department, if you have a pothole, they're the ones that are out there making sure that you can drive safely. Right. Uh, water management mm -hmm. is amazing. They do oh, a, yes. a great job. Mm -hmm. And again, every time you turn on that tap, that's us yeah. working hard. That's these folks in right. this building that mm -hmm. are working so hard on mm -hmm. get, making sure that that gets done. Mm -hmm. um, and so there is a, a wide variety of different types of jobs, lots of things that could motivate you mm -hmm. um, to, to make sure that you're doing the, you know, a great job and helping our community. All right. So check us out, right? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you both for joining me. I really appreciate it. Thank okay. you. Well, that does it for City Life. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Watch us on the Durham Television Network and on YouTube. And now you can listen to our podcast on iTunes as well. I'm Beverly Thompson. Thank you for joining me to learn more about City Life in Durham. So I wanted to talk about, too, some of the, I guess, more recent uh, outcomes of the pandemic, you know, remote work. Oh, How hmm. is the city with having uh, employees work remotely when they can? I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, there are probably some positions that, no, you can't right. be a policeman remotely. You can't be a fireman. Mm -hmm. can't do community engagement. But what is our Yeah, so, um, and you're... Absolutely right. I, for the most part, I think a lot of the positions that we have at the city are directly out in the community. Mm -hmm. And that becomes very challenging to do remotely. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the positions in public works, mm -hmm. you got to be there. Mm -hmm. You have to be there out in the street and mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, directing traffic. You can't do that remotely. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some positions that are remote uh, or that have the availability to do that or flexible work arrangements, mm -hmm. hybrid work arrangements, mm -hmm. they call them sometimes. Um, they tend to be the more administrative positions. Uh -huh. um, as an example, I work, you know, in the office two or three days a week. Mm -hmm. uh, but I know other departments, in particular, in a couple of portfolios, the the administrative portfolio, the um, uh, community. Uh, based mm -hmm. departments can sometimes work remotely as well. But the mm -hmm. operations, that's where fire, police, mm -hmm. public works, water management, some of those positions, unfortunately, they we just can't have them work remotely. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I was just going to ask real quick, the, um, Jim, I think you mentioned the apprenticeships. Mm -hmm. Are those up and running now? And exactly how do those work or will work? Right. So 
With the ones that we have currently, they're in water management um, and they're in the plants, the water plants, mm -hmm. as an apprentice or a mechanical apprentice. And the way that they work, you, you have to have the, whatever the minimum education requirement is, mm -hmm. but the work experience essentially is zero that mm -hmm. is related to that particular area. Mm -hmm. So you don't need a year's worth of experience working at a water maintenance plant, uh -huh. but you come on board as an apprentice, uh, after a certain amount of time, usually it's a year of work, you'll get together with your hiring manager and the director needs to sign off mm -hmm. that you have you know, successfully completed that first year. Mm -hmm. uh, if there are any particular certifications that are required, you would also need to get those within that year. Mm -hmm. But as long as we get the sign off and the approval to do so, you would then advance to that um, plant me maintenance mechanic mm -hmm. position. Um, so you would then hit that first rung of the ladder. So think of it as an invisible first rung of mm -hmm. the ladder as an apprentice. But then once you get that experience, you mm -hmm. would then move in. Mm -hmm. um, you wouldn't need to apply for it. It would just sort of uh, evolve. Your uh -huh. job would evolve into that, that first step. Awesome. Awesome. Now we are looking to expand this out. Uh -huh. So um, we have lots of different positions that are sort of at that entry point where there may be some educational requirement like mm -hmm. a high school diploma or a bachelor's degree, et cetera. But then it requires one or two years worth of experience. Mm -hmm. And so this is a way to, again, bridge that or put mm -hmm. a step stone, mm -hmm. if you will, so that you can get into that position and then mm -hmm. over time advance into mm -hmm. that first rung. How do you determine the starting pay for an apprentice type position? So that is where we're <laughs> struggling, mm -hmm. uh, only because um, we want to make sure that it's that it's indeed is equitable and that we're trying to you know incentivize people mm -hmm. into a position like this mm -hmm. but it becomes difficult because these the entry points uh are positions that have that the the educational part and one year of experience mm -hmm. well should somebody with no experience get paid the same as or even you know right. you know, on par with somebody who does have the experience mm -hmm. and so the short answer is no but the way that our steps work in our compensation philosophy, mm -hmm. um, we would sort of bring them down maybe a step or a half a step or even sometimes a step and a half, mm -hmm. depending on how much time it takes to get into that first rung. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that, you know, with our program, there is that first step, but then the apprentice would be sort of a, a step or a half a step below that. Mm -hmm. What a great opportunity, though, for someone who's just starting out and not really knowing what it is they want to do, but having exactly. an opportunity to explore. Uh, if, if I wanted to get into stormwater maintenance, mm -hmm. how would I? Because mm -hmm. I have no experience. Uh -huh. But if there was an apprenticeship position, I could say, hey, I can pick it up. I can learn. I'm a hard worker. Please, uh, please consider me. And then again, you know, based on that that interview and mm -hmm. of course the other qualifications, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully I could come in and learn the learn the business. Mm -hmm. So, are those positions advertised just like the others on the website? The the ones that we have currently are. Uh, again, we're looking to sort of expand this out so that it fits not only public works, uh, but also especially things like engineering, um, which are harder to fill. Um, but there are even administrative positions, uh, human resource professional. Well, oh. you could be a human resource professional as assistant or um, apprentice. Somebody who just graduated with a degree in human resources, um, and they could then, you know, after a year, as long as they got their certifications and put the work in, they could then move into that full time position. Wow. Or mm -hmm. I shouldn't say full time position, I should say sort of a, a human resource technician or, or specialist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just overall, why do you think people don't consider working for the city? I know when I graduated from college, well, mm -hmm. high school, college. Yep. I didn't think about the city. I was thinking about all the private uh, sector employees and, and maybe some nonprofits, but I didn't think about government. They give you free coffee. They give you donuts. <laughs> yes, they no. give you bagels when you walk in the Sass, front door. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. wow, isn't this great? Right? And, and you know what? I, I did the same thing. Uh -huh. I worked for a lot of big companies. Uh, I worked for small companies. Mm -hmm. I worked for tech companies, nursing companies. I've worked for a lot of different organizations, mm -hmm. all in the private sector. Mm -hmm. This is the first job I've ever had in the public sector. Yeah. 
Um, and again, there aren't any donuts here. I'm past the point where I need donuts to make me happy at work. But I, I, I feel as though there, there are things that as I grew into my career, mm -hmm. I wanted and the public sector has them, yeah. which is again, the benefits. Mm -hmm. I, they're, they're incredible. Um, things like the stability, yeah. there, there is a stability mm -hmm. that government has mm -hmm. that the public, uh, I'm sorry, right. that the private sector most certainly doesn't right. have. And those are the positions that have all the sizzle. Uh -huh. Oh, the big tech companies right. and the small company, mm -hmm. oh, entrepreneurial. Uh -huh. Well, that's great for somebody else, but mm -hmm. not for me at this point. Uh -huh. I, don't, I don't want, uh -huh. um, I don't want, you know, the, the fear of the next quarterly uh, report right. to come out. And right. if you don't hit your numbers for the quarter, guess what? Things <laughs> Bye -bye. aren't looking so great. Right. Um, so again, benefits, uh -huh. uh, there is this stability, and uh -huh. there's the, the giving back to the community. Uh -huh. I've had a lot of other jobs, again, that maybe were a little bit more flashy or a little mm -hmm. bit more jazzy. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I could do a great job, and I, I would have to go home and say, well, I did a great job, but did it really benefit anybody? Uh -huh. And you I don't set the bottom line of the company for, that exactly, you're somebody, for, right? Yeah, somebody got a bigger yacht. Right, well, that's that's right. awesome. Or the stock. Um, yeah, <laughs> the stock went up a half a, a half a penny. It does matter. But. Yes, yes, I, I agree. But as I said, but I think I'm, I've just sort of gotten past that. Uh -huh. And um, again, there, there's a huge thing, mm -hmm. and I, I recognize this in other jobs that I had, mm -hmm. where the work that you're doing is impacting people. Right, right. And again, I've had jobs where it didn't, where right. I couldn't see the connection. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I I was not engaged right, in those positions. Right. I did them, but, uh -huh. um, and again, maybe it was a little bit flashier, but I think the ones here uh, that are in the public sector mm -hmm. do offer that ability. Mm -hmm. And I know when you graduate, you're not thinking about retirement. You're not thinking about a pension plan, but 30 years down the road, you look back yeah. mm -hmm. and see how it has built on itself. And yeah, it's it's tough because I, uh, I again I'm giving you my my impression. That's what so I, want. I so I apologize if I'm coming across. Mm -hmm. But when you graduate from even from high school and, uh -huh. and or college, you're you got some debt. You don't have a place to stay. You don't have a car maybe that works. And again, <laughs> you know, it's it's money becomes more important. And mm -hmm. that whole phrase of you can't eat the benefits. Well, right. that's great that you have four retirement plans, uh -huh. but I'm not even thinking about retirement now. I just mm -hmm. need to get a new engine in my car right, so I right. can get to work every day. Uh -huh. So the money becomes more important. Uh -huh. But again, I, I think that it's it's one of those, um, I, I almost want to say it's it's a, a maturity or responsibility sort of point at mm -hmm. somebody's life where they say, yes, all right, money's important, mm -hmm. but money will come. Right. But what I need now is something that's stable where I can build my skills and then leverage that into mm -hmm. the next part of my career. Mm -hmm. Was this your first job with the city? Yes. Yes. Okay. How long have you been with the city? Six years six coming up, years. coming okay. up on six, uh -huh. six year. Uh -huh. And it's been everything you thought it would be. <laughs> well, I've worked at um, for the state, okay. and then prior to that, I spent a career in the military, twenty three uh -huh. years uh -huh. as a military officer. So now, I've worked for the government on different levels. Uh -huh. between, and one of the main points that I do emphasize when I talk with the new employee, uh -huh. I mentioned the long game. Uh -huh. It's kind of uh -huh. a golf uh -huh. term. You're here for the long game. You hear the and I talk and I embed in them the 401 piece. I mentioned to them about the promotions, about the opportunities and, and where you can see yourself. Uh -huh. So I feel like if I can plant that seed uh -huh. in a new candidate, a person who is coming on board uh -huh. at that time when they first time they meet me, we sit here and we have that discussion, uh -huh. then I can just show them here's where you're going, here's the steps. Can you see yourself in there? Mm -hmm. So, and everybody defines success differently. They do. So that's important. Mm -hmm. But if you can show them and you have proof and you can really express to them, there's a path here that is a selling point for retention, mm -hmm. as well as going back to the public and letting someone else know about the benefits of working for the city. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? I mean, you guys are really so informative. I, I think the public really will get a lot out of this and learn a lot about the, the various openings in the city. I mean, it's just really a great place to work. Yeah, um, it, this came to my mind as you, as you were talking, Philip, and it goes back to the training um, question that you had and the abilities for promotion. Uh -huh. um, and I've said this to you um, 
uh, on before, so you're going to get bored of me saying this all the time. But um, one of the little phrases that always flows through my mind is uh -huh. that you are interviewing for your next job every day. Uh -huh. And that is absolutely the truth, which is you can come to work and you can do the bare minimum. You know what they call them, bare minimum Mondays now is, is the, the latest fad or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. But it ain't going to get you that very far. Um, again, you're being, your performance is being evaluated. And so, again, every day that you're at work, if you're doing a good job and you're adding value to the department and the team, mm -hmm. there are opportunities. There are going to be opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, whether you're formally interviewing or not, every day that you come in and you do a good job, mm -hmm. other people around you are, are making, are taking notes, mm -hmm. making notice. They know that you're doing a good job mm -hmm. and that you're adding value. Sure. So it's one of those things that, again, it's the long game. Mm -hmm. uh, as you said, it absolutely is something that you have to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. And again, the, the better you are at keeping that in mind, the more opportunities are going to come up. Wonderful. All right, guys. Any other questions you have? I did have a question because I think there's a misperception that to work in government, you need a, some sort of a degree. You, you don't um, necessarily can't get by with a, a high school diploma or a GED. Is, is there any truth to that? Well, I know I would say the majority of the positions that we have, uh, the minimum educational requirement is is a high school diploma. Mm -hmm. um, we do have the ability. It is really up to the manager, um, whoever the hiring manager is, to use what they call an equivalency. Mm -hmm. okay. So there are some ways that if a position requires, and I'll make up an example, but if, if it requires an associate's degree and a certain number of years of experience, if a manager wants to, they can opt to have an equivalency put in mm -hmm. there. So somebody with a high school diploma and additional years of experience mm -hmm. can also meet the minimum requirements for that wow. job. So it's a way to broaden it out mm -hmm. and not be as limiting based on just the education. Mm -hmm. So bottom line is people need to complete the application, put down what they think their, their um, I guess, their qualifications and experience is and then just apply and definitely see what happens. Yeah, meeting the minimum qualifications mm -hmm. is critical. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't call them minimum, minimum qualifications for nothing. For nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and they will, you know, if indeed you mm -hmm. um, you apply for something and you don't, mm -hmm. you will be screened out. It's mm -hmm. it's something unfortunately we we just have to do. We can't mm -hmm. we can't look into the soul of of a candidate and right. know that they will be you know able to do the job. We mm -hmm. have to be able to look at those minimum uh -huh. qualifications to mm -hmm. justify the salary, etc. Uh -huh. uh -huh. So. Uh, um, very important that you meet the minimum qualifications, but absolutely, if you're interested mm -hmm. in a job and you meet the minimum qualifications, mm -hmm. apply. Yeah, yeah, and transferable skills are a thing too yep. nowadays. Absolutely, so. yeah. absolutely. Anything else you guys wanted to cover? Or okay, well, I think that's a wrap. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you.